So on part D, dividing, um, this is, again, you may have done it in Math 3, you may not have, or you may just not remember it from Math 3, but when we divide rational expressions, that's what these are, fractions with polynomials in them are rational expressions, we want to first of all factor everything. So x squared plus 9 is x plus 3 times x minus 3, difference of perfect squares. Okay, um, I'm going to do two steps here so I don't <clears throat> confuse anybody. So for the second rational expression, numerator doesn't factor, it's a single term. The denominator is x minus 3 times x minus 2. Now when you divide rational expressions, <clears throat> what happens is you flip the second one over and it turns into multiplication. So I'm going to flip that second rational expression over and my division symbol turns into multiplication and when we do that we cancel anything that appears in either numerator and denominator. So x minus 3 shows up in the second numerator and the first denominator so we can cancel those. x cubed uh, let me just rewrite that above it really quickly. x cubed can be rewritten as x times x times x. And the reason why I do that is to make it more obvious that I can cancel out one of those x's. So this, fully simplified, would be x squared, x times x, put that back, okay, times x minus 2 over x plus 3. So <clears throat> that's the simplified version of that expression right there. Okay? We will come back to that. We will do a lot more with rational expressions uh, later on in this class because they are very essential to calculus and they are tested on the, the final exam. But I just wanted to see uh, if y'all remember it or if you've seen it before. All right, what we're going to focus on today is uh, two things. We're going to do two things. We have two learning targets today. The first one is to be able to create linear combinations of polynomials. Now that sounds kind of weird, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me, but linear combinations of polynomials. So let's break down the terminology here. First of all, polynomials, y'all should know what a polynomial is. Uh, it's anything it's like x cubed minus 6x squared. It's what we'll be just dealing with in the warm-up. A linear combination and linear means that we don't have any exponents. So it's just like a 5x type thing. Uh, and combinations, it means you may be putting things together. All right? <clears throat> so every day we will have at least one learning target. I do suggest that you write it down kind of as the, the title of your notes. Um, but some days we'll, um, some days I'll talk about it before we, we go into it. Some days I'll have you guys talk about it. Uh, it just kind of depends on where I feel like we're at, okay? But the first thing we're going to look at today is creating linear combinations of polynomials. So we're just going to jump straight into some examples, okay? So we've got two functions. f of x is the polynomial x squared minus 5x plus 1. More specifically, that's a quadratic, okay? The general term is a, a polynomial, but more specifically, it's a quadratic to the x squared. And g of x is negative 3x squared minus 6, another quadratic, okay? This one is a trinomial, this one is a binomial. I'm just trying to throw out as many of those terms uh, as I possibly can. So we are going to find 3f of x plus 5g of x. This is what we call a linear combination. We're combining the two functions. It's linear because we're just multiplying it by a constant. Okay, we're not multiplying it by 3x or anything like that. So really, all we're going to do here, if we're trying to find 3f of x plus 5g of x, we're just going to substitute the expressions for those functions, and we're going to simplify. So 3 times, I'm going to plug in my f of x function, 4f of x, plus 5 times g of x. I'm going to plug in my g of x function negative 3x squared minus 6. And then I'm going to simplify that expression. 
I need to distribute those constants and combine like terms. So we've got 3x squared minus 15x plus 3. Make sure you distribute it to all your terms. Minus 15x squared minus 30. And final step is going to be to simplify, combine like terms. So we've got negative 12x squared minus 15x minus 27. Okay, pretty straightforward. You just got to be careful with those computations. Okay, make sure that you're careful with your sums. Keep it pretty neat and organized. <clears throat> All right, now, B looks a lot different from A, but it's not any different from A. Okay, it's just using a slightly different notation. Um, this X in parentheses right here is just a shorthand notation. Instead of having to write 2F of X minus G of X, okay, we're shortening it. We're doing 2F minus G of X. Um, it's going to have to write that twice. That does not mean multiply everything by X in the end, okay? Does not mean multiply by X. It's just another form of function notation. It's a little short print, so you don't have to write that third time. Okay? So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did in A, except it's just a different linear combination. <clears throat> okay, it's just a different linear combination here. So we've got uh, 2 times our F function. So we're still going to plug that in. This time it's just minus the G function. Now, <clears throat> you may not see a point in putting parentheses here, but you really, really do need to put parentheses here because that negative needs to be distributed to the g of x function. So if we distribute the 2, we get 2x squared minus 10x plus 2. Distribute the negative, that becomes positive 3x squared plus 6. And then final step, we want to combine like terms, so we get 5x squared minus 10x plus 8. That was our final answer. Okay, sometimes our linear combinations will ask us to evaluate at a point. Okay, so same notation that we just saw in part B, but instead of x being at the end, it's a negative 1. So same logic, we're not going to multiply by negative 1. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in negative 1. So personally, on this problem, um, I'm going to rewrite that expression right there. I'm going to kind of expand it out into its longhand form because really it is easier to plug in negative 1 into my g function and then multiply that answer by 3 as opposed to multiplying the entire g function by 3, simplifying, and then plugging in negative 1. You should come up with the same answer, but it's a little bit faster if you go ahead and evaluate these functions, okay? So I'm going to uh, plug it, I'm going to copy down my three, okay? And I'm going to plug in negative one into my g function. So that's going to be negative three times negative one squared minus six minus, I'm going to plug negative one into my f of x function. So negative 1 squared minus 5 times negative 1 plus 1. <clears throat> now I know that you have your calculators at your disposal, but I try and do as much arithmetic as I possibly can. I try and do it by hand, slashing my head, um, especially if you plan on going to AP Cal. Questions like this are going to be non-calculator activated portions of the test. So the better you are with, with doing the arithmetic, without relying on your calculator, the better off you're going to be in the long run. 
Um, and so a lot of colleges don't even let you use a calculator in their class at all. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so when we square negative 1, we get a positive 1. So we've got negative 3 minus 6 there in parentheses. <clears throat> We're squaring negative 1 again, so that's positive 1. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. So we have 3 times negative 9 minus 1 plus 5 plus 1 is 7. So we've got negative 27 minus 7, which is negative 34. There's negative 34. Now, as I mentioned, you could have gone through the process. You could have said 3 times g minus f, simplified that expression, and then plugged in negative 1. It may have taken about the same number of steps. I don't know. I think it's easier to plug in the number as opposed to simplifying the expression first. Okay? Now, one more way that this can look is instead of having just an x or just a negative 1 that we're plugging in, then we could be asked to plug in another expression. Okay? In this case, we're plugging in 1 minus 2a. We're going to plug in 1 minus 2a in addition to creating this linear combination of negative f plus 4g. Now, personally, this, this again is my personal preference. I'm not going to do it like I did it in part c. Okay? In part c, I plugged in the negative 1 and then simplified. Uh, in this case, I'm going to simplify the linear combination first. And then I'm going to plug in the 1 minus 2a into that. Because here's why. Okay, if I look at f and g, they're both quadratics. Okay, if I plug in 1 minus 2a everywhere I see x, then I'm going to have to foil that expression. And I'm going to have to multiply by negative 5. And I'm going to have to foil it again over here. But if I do the linear combination first, meaning um, I do the negative f plus 4g, I think is what it was. If I simplify this expression first, looking at what I did before, I only have like one case where I'm going to have to foil that expression. I don't have to foil it twice. Okay? Again, you should come to the same conclusion, either, either order you do it in, but this, in my opinion, is, is a little bit quicker of a way to get there. Okay? So, as I mentioned, I'm going to do the linear combination part first. So I'm going to do negative f plus 4 times g. And I'm going to keep that 1 minus 2a part just kind of in my back pocket. Okay, I'm not going to do anything with it right now. Um, I'm just, and I'm going to label this actually, so I know what I'm doing. That's negative four, or excuse me, negative f plus four, plus four g. Okay, I'm going to simplify this part. I simplify it fully, so I get negative thirteen x squared plus five x minus twenty five. Okay, that's my negative f plus four g. That's not all I had to do. Okay, I was supposed to plug in or evaluate it for 1 minus 2a. So now, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 1 minus 2a. And then I'm going to simplify. 1 minus 2a squared is not 1 minus 4a squared. We've got a foil back. It's 1 minus 4a plus 4a squared. If you need to do that in an extra step, that is perfectly fine. I just kind of condensed it there. And then I distribute the 5, and we've got minus 25 on the end. So let's see here, uh, one more step of simplifying, distribute the negative 13, 
see here. Negative 13 times 4 is 52.